One thing that's true for all moms, we have a lot of stories to tell. Some are silly, some are gross, some bring us to tears. With each story that's shared, another mom feels a little less alone. So join us as we laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the iMom Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the iMom Podcast. I'm Abby. Susan, Megan, and Chloe are here once again. And this week, we're talking about developing a parenting partnership with your husband. Stats show that today's dads are more involved than dads have ever been, but there is definitely still a parenting divide that begins even before a baby's born. The mom develops these comp- these, this competency in her skills as a parent, and dad defers to her. Like, Chloe, I'm sure that you have experienced that. Like, Trent looks to you and is like, what does the baby need? Because... You've been hanging out with this kid for nine months longer than him and feeding him and doing all these things that your husband can't necessarily do as readily as you can, right? Facts. But what (laughs) starts as like a small divide when the baby is a month, two months, 10 months starts to multiply, you know, throughout maternity leave. And then when mom is with baby more often and toddler more often, and it just kind of grows. And so some of this is just the nature of motherhood. Some of it's natural and good and wonderful, but with more moms working today, we really do need parenting partners. Mm. And so today I want to talk about how to cooperate with our husbands, lean on each other's strengths, and communicate better about all of our parenting needs. So my first question, if two parents are both working full-time, which everybody in this room, that is a fact, how do moms keep from being the one who takes on all the parenting things, the appointments, communication with teachers, making sure shoes fit, making sure there's milk in the fridge, because it seems like that's just kind of how it happens. I mean, this will solve all of the problems right here if we can, and we can be done with the episode uh, if we can just answer huh. it. <laughs> I will say one thing I'm learning. I, I'm in the beginning stages of learning this is being okay with my husband doing it differently than me. Yeah. Because if he skips a step in my routine, my son will be fine. <laughs> but I get like, I have to like just step out of the way. Sometimes even leave the room. Just let him do it and it'll be okay. I think that's a great point. I don't like, do you want a partner or do you want another you? Mm. Because he's going to do it differently. Partners in business operate diff- differently, right? Well, my husband has our son today and he was able to get him back into his crib for his nap time at a time that I never can. So I was like, <laughs> well, good job. You did something that I can't even do. <laughs> I do think that's a stress point because I, you know, had a schedule, had certain things I want to happen and homework that had to get done or whatever. And I, Mark did it different Mm -hmm. or missed some things. And I'd be like, I left you a list. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. Follow the list. Yeah. Well, and I think I'm afraid that if it's not done a certain way, that it's going to come back to haunt me. Oh. Because like, for example, if my husband wants to like, you know, take my oldest to get a treat or whatever. I'm like, no, because then I'm going to have to deal with the fallout of the sugar meltdown mm-hmm. or wants to let him stay up late. And I'm like, no, because then I'm going to have to deal with the meltdown. Right. Or, you yeah. know, if he, the younger one takes a morning nap, then he's going to skip his afternoon nap and that's going to really mess up my work schedule. And so there's all these things that I'm kind of being selfish and I'm like, oh, that's going to blow back on me. So I don't want you to go do that. Um, but I've kind of tried to think, okay, like if this is a special treat or whatever, great. Or I've, I had to think, okay, this isn't the way I would do it, but like, it's not going to seriously harm him. They'll be fine. And if I have to deal with the blowback, I have to deal with the blowback. But Mm -hmm. I think that's why a lot of the times I've talked with my friends about it too. And they're like, it's a control thing because I know I'm going to have to deal with the fallout of it. Yeah, that's good. But I think that's one thing that women excel at is thinking of all the details. So you know that if he takes James to the park and he's wearing these shoes, Well, you know that he's going to come back with those shoes with mud on them. And those are the shoes that he has to to wear. And I'm going to have to wash them. And And so then he comes back with the shoes and you're like, we wore the shoes that he wasn't supposed to wear. And he's like, I just took him to the park. And and so you have this partner that is just not retaining and juggling all of the details that you are as mom. So I think that, you know, there's just got to be some some balance, though, of like accepting the way that they do it, but also... um, being able to, I guess, to recover when it's not, yeah, when you got to pick up the pieces. That's hard. Yeah. It's, it's a really hard balance. Cause in some ways for me, I think it's definitely a control thing. Cause he could wear those shoes to school with the mud on them. It's not the end of the world, but of course I want him to look semi presentable. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I don't want him to look like, you know, he's a slob going yeah. into school where as my husband would literally not care and not even give it a second thought. Yeah. yeah. 
What are some strengths that you think dads bring to parenting? I have boys, so it would be really tough if you were not there because they are high energy. They like to wrestle. They like to play sports. They like to play outside. And I can't say I like to do any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he definitely brings a energy that they love and they feed off of and they really look up to him and respect him. Well, for, so. even if they were girls, even if you had girls, I think that dads like my dad wrestled with me yeah. as a little girl, yeah. but I, it taught me how to be kind of tough. And, yeah. you know, it, so I think that playing differently is definitely a big one. Yeah. I think that when, you know, we became moms, like we, you just lose this sense of autonomy. And I think my husband having more autonomy than I do brings this um, kind of peacefulness because I still struggle with feeling like anything my son isn't doing correctly isn't a reflection of me. Like if he's not sleeping, it's something I'm not doing. If he's gassy, it's something I ate. Like, but my husband comes in with a fresh perspective. Chloe, stop it. I, it's a hard thing. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. I know, oh no, I know. Aww. I I gotta stop it. But he brings in this sense of like, you know. I guess just because it's it, kind of what you were saying at the top of the episode, you know, they're connected to us for so long. Yeah. So. Yeah. But they are little people themselves. Yeah. You can't blame yourself. No, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that dads communicate differently too. I think that men tend to get mm. be a little bit more straightforward. Like my husband is much more um, direct with the kids where yeah. I tend to, you know, kind of circle the topic or I try to sprinkle it with whatever. And he's just like, bam. And they respond really well most of the time. Yeah. And so it's just two different styles that I think kids need both of, but when we jump in and go, well, no, you got to tell them like this, then, you know, we're, they're missing out on just that different, um, different style. I don't know what, I don't know, maybe it's just my kids. I don't know what it is too, but I feel like my kids are better behaved for their dad, which is funny because they're around me much more of the, of the time. Cause he goes to work all day, every day. And I work from home. So I just tend to see them more. But wasn't there some survey that we talked about in a previous episode where it said children are 800 times more likely to misbehave for their mother than for anyone else, including their including their dad? I don't remember the number, but I do remember and it that. was something it was some insane Trendy, astronomical yeah. number. And I get that it's like, oh, they feel the most comfortable around you, whatever, yada, yada. But I do think it's good for me to leave sometimes and then spend one on one time with him because it just brings like you said, a different energy and they are better behaved. And sometimes he does see them misbehave and whatnot. Cause sometimes I'll come home and I'll be like, Oh, they were great. And I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do think there's a certain kind of, especially for boys, even like in a big group, you know, you look at coaching or whatever, a guy will come in the room. It's something about that testosterone and it just takes them down a notch. Mm. Like they're just not sure. Whereas if a, a mom can walk in the room and they're totally oblivious. Mm -hmm. mm. I've seen that like in church settings with like a female youth minister versus a male youth minister. Mm -hmm. Like they just, there's something about like all the kids kind of, I a little don't know bit what more control. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So what do you do if your kids are the ones who keep putting more on one parent? So, you know, say that they don't like that dad takes over and is doing morning drop off now or something like that. Like, how do you, how do you, um, tell the kids, well, this is how it's going to be because I, your dad and I are doing this together. Yeah. So I have to say, I probably did more, Megan, would you agree? And, and, and kind of, um, was more involved in our kids things. But my friend taught me this. She had to travel for work and I'd show up at a swim meet or something and her husband would be there and I'd be like, oh my gosh, he really like when she just goes. And she said that it was the best thing for their parenting and marriage that she started having to travel because he had to start stepping in for his girls mm -hmm. and they learned to rely on him mm. and he learned how to get things done with them. And it was um, a really good yeah. experience for all of them. Yeah. My kids, my husband had to pick my kids up from school one day and went to the wrong car line. And <laughs> oh, <they're> no. Never, <laughs> he, will, he will never hear the end of it. Aww. And so now he's like, so I'm going, like he had to do it the other day again. He's like, <laughs> so I'm anxiety. going to the one that's Aww. right off of this road, right? Uh -huh. I'm like, yes. Poor yeah. guy. I know. I know. Poor See, guy. my husband would do that and love it because all the teachers would give him attention. No, go this way. He, just, <laughs> he would just eat oh. it up. Well, do you remember the story about James teacher. Oh yeah. Do yeah, tell. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, 
I've been class mom for the past two years, which is great. I don't I don't mind doing it. It's a fun job. But uh, I had just organized like the Christmas party and all the teacher gifts and done all these field trip signups for parents to go and whatnot and yada, yada. And James' teacher, who we love, she was a doll. But there was one, it was like at the end of the year school party or whatever. And like I said, I had just like done everything for the entire year. And Hampton shows up at the end of the year thing and she just looks at me and she goes, you just have the best husband. Aww. Look at him here in the middle of the work day. And he's just so involved. And you were just so like, like <laughs> fawning over him. And I'm like... I, he yeah. has not done a single thing. It's because it's oh expected gosh. of the mom. Yeah, I know, not I know, I know. It was just so, so funny, funny because Hampton is like, I could tell that he was like nervous because he's like, oh no. Like, oh this is my not- God. That's great, man. That's great. So we're talking about developing a parenting partnership and that means that you have to agree on things that pertain to the kids, right? A friend of mine said that she and her husband disagreed on what her daughter should be allowed to wear. She said that she was a little more flexible because she understood her daughter desire to fit in. Um, he was hardline on midriffs and hemlines. So even though you're married and you love each other and you're raising kids together, you still have your own opinions and yeah. you know thoughts. And so how do you act like partners instead of opponents if you disagree as parents on something that has to do with your kids? I liked when Mark was more hardline on stuff. It just took the burden off of me. Mm. So like, okay, good. You feel strong about that? I'm going with it. And yeah. would you do that like uh, real time if you guys were having a conversation and there was oh, a we difference? tried to do do our decision making away from the kids. Okay. You don't want them to triangulate. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know. Our- but how would you have handled that in a situation? Like, would you say, you know, dad and I need to talk? Oh, yeah. Okay. I would I would, it I was, would give him. <laughs> it was so funny. My dad, a, a certain age he like we would ask him stuff and he would literally like the first thing out of his mouth would be what did your mom say like Mm. he didn't even like give any sort of answer because he's too afraid (laughs) we did have hand signals like we had certain things like okay like you know cut the conversation down now we're gonna talk tonight Um, yeah and we would have certain meeting times like okay here's the list of things we need to discuss (laughs) megan was invited to you know a boy girl party what do you want to do yeah Um, you know we 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 were very I feel like it's best for the kids if you have a united front um, and you just need to be able able to say, okay, like the hemline thing or whatever. Is this a, what is this on a scale of one to 10? And if he says it's a 10 to him, yeah, why? Okay. Well, because uh, guys look at girls and that's going to send the wrong impression. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Go with it. Yeah. So it sounds like I keep going back to like business partners. They Business partners don't agree on everything, right. but they have a procedure for how to speak in front of their employees and Mm. how to run their business and then how to address issues that maybe they're not quite on the same page is doing. And so, yeah, you just got to treat them like partners. So where does gender come into play? Because for example, let's say that your husband feels strongly about what your daughter is wearing, but you're like, okay, that is age appropriate for her. And I feel comfortable with it. And Mm -hmm. I'm of a female, mm. you know, but he's kind of being extreme about it. So like and that was the case with my friend. Yeah. Well, and like sometimes I will get on the boys about stuff and Hampton will look at me and be like, they're, they're little boys. Like right. they're, they're going to do this. You need to let this um, go. And I'll kind of be like, okay, you're, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That's well, a good point. then I think you go back to, okay, well, is this honoring to God to us? Like, is that hemline? Where are you drawing attention? Are you drawing attention to your face or your this butt? This from the woman who put underwear in my Christmas stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> let me but did you let anybody see it? <laughs> no. So that, that's a the undergarment. That's not something you're showing no, the know, world. I felt like it was like a 10 for him. Just, <laughs> yeah. just her no, dad but see, home videos. But see, <laughs> yes. but see, I won that because that's a comfort yeah, thing. That's yeah. a, you know, panty line thing to me. Um, <laughs> Once again, we're talking about Megan's underwear. Exactly. On podcast. <laughs> I know, right? We need to have a sound effect for every time we do a ding. Yeah. <laughs> Megan's underwear came up again. <laughs> and, yeah. So if you think your husband isn't participating in parenting as much as you want him to or as much as he should, what is the right way to bring it up? I do think you you can give each other roles to play. Like, okay, this is hard for me with our girls. They're really fighting me on it. I need you to be the heavy. Mm-hmm. I need you to be the one that da, 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 da. Or, you know, whatever it is, you have to 
decide what is your role going to be. When we adopted two older kids, we really had to figure that out. It was like, okay, there were times I went to him and said, okay, they've worn me out. I can't do it anymore. So you're up. Mm. And that means you're going to fight all the battles for the next week because I'm yeah. I'm well, sometimes it. I think it's good to hear from the opposite gender because it may be awkward, but at the same time, I feel like I remember dad being like, I'm a guy. I'm going to tell you what guys are thinking. Right. And it was a, like, I feel like you had told me the same thing, but it feels a little bit more harsher and heavy <laughs> weighted and awkward. Coming oh, yeah. From You're like, I just dad. want this to end. Your I'll dad. do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I feel like that just, it just plays better. Yeah. It yeah. is. And I think even when they're that little going to sleep or whatever, sometimes a new person coming, like your husband coming in and saying, Nope, you know, I can walk away from this crying. So you're going to sleep, bud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you need to ask him, or you need to approach the topic with an open mind and asking more than telling. So if you say, I feel like I'm carrying a lot and I can't keep carrying all this, I need your help more. What can I do? How can I make it possible for you to help more? Because maybe he's going to have opinions about, like, okay, well, you you run this this way and it's really hard for me to jump in because you're doing it this way. And then yeah. you have to kind of be open to maybe some tough feedback from him if, you know. That's a good point. Yeah. So what are some other, what you just said, um, Susan, is a good one, but what are some other creative ways to divide up parenting duties? So say mom's listening and she's like, all right, yes, I want to start divvying this up more. What are some creative ways that husbands and wives can split parenting duties? For example, I know a family where dad is in all is in charge of all things medicine. So like he makes appointments, he takes kids to appointments, he handles dosages and prescriptions, and mom does all things school. So mm, like yeah. all the permission slips, all that cool. stuff. Any other ideas like that? I know it's kind of putting you on the spot. I think the other thing you can do is kind of assess, like you said, what you're good at. So if I have a couple friends who one's really high energy and one's low, so the one who's High energy gets up in the morning with them and gets them ready for school. While the other one has a little more time, so you have to know, you know, you. Am I that friend? Yeah, you are. No, no, you weren't. It was (laughs) somebody else. But I was thinking, (laughs) no, I am high energy. I'm just not a morning person, right? So So really, that personal assessment of what's hard for me. Can you? Can you do this for me? Because that's a, like a 10 mm-hmm. for me. If you could do that for me, it's going to help me for the rest of the yeah. day. Right. It's good. Yeah. Or realizing what your hour is that's like really hard. Like I lost it last night, not on the kids. I lost it on a top of a blender. Mm. I was like, ready to <laughs> top of a blender? throw it because I kept putting it in the cabinet and it kept falling. Oh. And I was and you're just chucking oh it. Oh my <laughs> gosh. By the end, I like slammed it on the table and the boys both looked at me. I said, it's not you. It's me. It's not you. It's me. And like oh. that hour of like, crazy like if you could tell your husband from five to seven I'm gonna do all the things that I need to do but I really need you to be present and here pick three things that are yours to do I think that that would be we had a Saturday morning deal I just wanted to get up on Saturday mornings and run a few errands by Mm -hmm. myself like I just got to get these things done and I can't tow three kids around to do it and he would let me do that. I would get up Saturday mornings. I would go, you know, like the Sam's Club Hall. You do not want kids in Sam's Club. No, no. You know what's really helpful is my ex-husband handles all the scout stuff. So both my boys do scouts. And he's the one that registered them. It works out to where most of the meetings are on the nights that they're with him. And I don't even, like, look at the email mm. unless he's like, hey, like, tonight, for example, he's like, hey, grandma's has a meeting on Tuesday night. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm, I'm in. I can do it. But otherwise, I don't even have to, like think about scouts. He does all of it. So like in a family with mom and dad, both in the same house, maybe dad's the soccer guy and dad does all soccer and mom only has to go along if she, you know, I mean, she'll go along, but she only has to do what she needs to do. But that's a good point. Like getting as much out of it as you possibly can. So you're not micromanaging dad. You know, if it's dad's responsibility, give it to dad. Oh, I, was, I was laughing because to your point, I don't care about organized sports, but I was like, okay, let's get, he's old enough. Let's get him in soccer day before the first game i was like does he have cleats oh no or shorts or shin guards or any of this he's like uh no <laughs> oh better go to the store amazon <laughs> oh yeah wow oh, real fast my gosh. Um, or you could you could buy a couple of the things like at at the Facility, first thing yeah but i was like oh okay that's so funny. We even divided up academics. Like I was the math girl. He was the English gr- guy, you know? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You reviewed that, that paper, good. hun. Oh, that's my smart. gosh. I, oh. That's smart. She didn't like that. I would like to read when I had to take an English question because I knew I was going to get the the 
longest answer on the uh, planet. Mark was a little long on answers. He yeah. the chat GPT or the well, Mark and he would like lawyer the paper. <laughs> so it was like not a, you know, Concise. creative yeah. synopsis. <laughs> it was like a point one, point two, and therefore and henceforth. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Another great way to split parenting duties is to get your husband to start an all pro dad chapter at your kid's school that would automatically get him in mm. the school and get more involved yeah. and yeah. meet uh-huh. the teachers. Yeah. Yep. That's great. And I'll put a link to that in the show notes and all the other great articles that we talked about today, like how to bring out the best in your husband as a dad and the strengths that dads bring to parenting. And thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.